Hello everyone, welcome back to the Bucket Think Tank. So in a world where we didn't get a lot of interest in Doctor Who news this month, I mean, who the new title sequence didn't look interesting, it looked a bit dull in my opinion. Um, Chris Chimlin didn't give any really interesting news. We found out Jamie Matheson was not going to be writing an episode this season. There was nothing of any real interest for Jodie's tenure as a Doctor, and I'm sure the season will be good, but I need something to you know, get me through this other than watching those episodes again, you know? So luckily, Big Finish didn't let me down with his Gallifrey Time War um, series, which turned out to be really good. I was a bit skeptical at first. You know, I'm not a big fan of um, Doctor Who stories without the Doctor in it, like at all. Like he's only mentioned in this one. And the Gallifrey series is sort of – like it's almost aware that – Th you, this is a series that doesn't have the Doctor in it. It's not because it's trying to act like the Doctor's there or going out of his way to say he isn't there, but they have this really strong cast of characters who know the Doctor or know of him. And it's sort of seeing an impact that the Doctor's had on these people's lives. We have Romana, still in her second incarnation, having stepped down as president of Gallifrey to become the head of the Celestial Intervention Agency, which is effectively an organization that seeks to monitor time in the way that um, the Ninth Doctor says the Time Lords are supposed to do in the episode Father's Day when Rose saves her dad. We have Leela of the Sabatine, another of the Fourth Doctor's companions, who comes from a rather primitive area. She's, she's this great warrior woman who goes around just knowing she can kill just about everything in the room. She's totally adept with multitude of weapons, and in this highly advanced society, she'd almost be viewed as like some sort of lesser being, but she brings forth a strong will and strong principles that I think Gallifrey needs more than ever. We have Ace, the seventh Doctor's companion, who honestly no one knew what became of her in Doctor Who after um, the show was cancelled, but the Cartmel master plan sort of implied that this was always going to happen to Ace, that she would be sent to Gallifrey courtesy of the Doctor. And we have one of the strangest of people, the Doctor's older brother, Irving Braxigatel, who was only in this Gallifrey series, and I have to say, if you want something to get you into the Gallifrey series, I would say the Time War is, and the Time War is this really cool thing that Big Finch is sort of tapping into, not just with the War Doctor series done by the late John Hurt, but the Eighth Doctor is now in the Time War, and then we see... Another 8th Doctor audio called the Doom Coalition, which is a group of Time Lords who are trying to prevent the Time War by any means necessary. And the Time War, it wasn't purely a Russell C. Davis idea. And it's not to say he didn't come up with it himself, because he did, and it's a really cool idea. But it always felt like the Time War, once you hear about it, it was probably always going to happen. In Genesis of the Daleks, we find out that the Time Lords foresaw a point where the Daleks have wiped out all creation in the universe that isn't Dalek, and so the, they send the Doctor back, okay, you either have to fix, you have to change their creation, or you have to end them. And the Doctor, at the end of it all, couldn't, couldn't kill them, says, I don't have the right to do that. And then we see things like Remembrance of the Daleks, where they're going looking for, where they find two different Dalek factions, um, you know, clashing over Gallifrey and artifacts, like the Hand of Omega. And then there's an issue for the Silver Nemesis, and even the audio plays before this with stories like Apocalypse Element, you kind of see that the war is coming to the horizon, and this box set is sort of about the Time Lords realizing it's unavoidable, here it is. So let's sort of go into that. So our first story is Celestial Intervention, and this one is Romana having to deal with protecting the interests of Gallifrey while dealing with the uh, dealing with you know president livia and an increasingly more mysterious and more obscure war council and to me this reminds me of season two of Downton Abbey, where after it was announced they'd gone to war with germany the entire household changed there was a different dynamic there was different people in everyone had new responsibilities and roles and the house was never the same again even after and here we see the first big issue, which is a group of refugees. And the big issue from one side is, well, what's going to happen if we bring them in? Um, are they just staying? Can we afford to take them? Because, you know, a lot of our credits, a lot of our money is going towards further war effort. 
and they're going to want citizenship. What rights do we bestow upon them? Should we vet them? And they don't have a lot of time because they, would have, they were wiped out by the Daleks. They went from a population of 9 billion to not even 10,000. And so the big issue is that the War Council uses them as leverage, effectively putting a gun to Romana's hand, using the refugees. And she has to decide whether or not to grant the War Council the certain privileges they want. And once we find out exactly what the War Council is doing, it totally changes everything. And the reason I'm leaving this vague enough in the air is because it's a... It's a big deal what they're doing, and it's really, really cool and dark in a bit. They try to make it sound like a good thing, but it feels just uncomfortable just hearing it. Um, next one is Soldier Obscura. So Irving and Braxy tell, Irving Braxy tell and Ace are going to find a weapon on a research facility that is part that is hidden in a deadly region of space called the Obscura which is an area where a lot of temporal fights have happened. So effect effectively, it's sort of like the Time War. Something close to the Time War, but not as, and there's all this temporal energy around it that if you look at it, it'll drive you insane, sort of like the Ark of the Covenant. And apparently, Braxitel has a weapon here that could help, and in the, in the research station, there is this other time lady named uh, Donna, who is known to be Braxitel's teacher, and we find out a bit more interesting stuff about Brax, but the real meat of this is the interactions between Ace and Brax. So Ace is used to the, to the Doctor keeping secrets. He's used, she's used to Time Lords having all these long games, but because of that, she's not really going to put up with it from Braxitel. And that's sort of what makes this fun, because we sort of see some similarities between the dynamic between Ace and Brax and Ace and the Doctor, but we're also seeing some differences. And yet, some really striking similarities. I think a weird thing about Braxiatel is he's the Doctor's older brother, so you kind of wonder how sibling relationships work in Doctor Who. And if the idea that the Doctor bases his incarnations and his some, maybe some of his personality traits when he regenerates off people he knows, what impact has Brax had? And looking at Brax, he's sort of like the Seventh Doctor in some ways. And that's interesting, too. So how this ends is pretty pretty messed up, actually. A bit more messed up than the first one. But I think it's best we just leave that in the air. Because it is something that will totally change everything. It may not change the Time War, but it will definitely change Doctor Who going forward. Especially Ace. Um, next up is The Devil You Know. Now, this was surprising. I didn't know this would happen. So Romana needs help. She has to do the unthinkable, especially since the Doctor has said... He's staying out of this. So she has to go to someone else to go on this very dangerous mission. And it's their most dangerous warrior, the Master. And not just any Master, the Derek Jacobi Master. So I was super excited because I loved him in the War Master set. He may be my favorite Master along with the Alex McQueen version. Mm, more stories with these two. More stories with these two. And he's not going alone. Romana's not stupid. Someone has to keep an eye on him, and who better to go than Leela, someone who knows the Master, maybe not as well as other people, but not only does she know the Master, she can kill him. She's got the, she's got the, she's got the strength, she's got the discipline, she's got the know-how, and more importantly, the Master underestimates her, which is a big boon for Leela, but the mission they're going on is they're trying, they have to interrogate someone. Um... Finney and Valentine used to be one person, now there are two of them, each from different timelines. And they're each pretty different, one's rather meek, one's pretty assertive, one's, one's constantly afraid, one's very angry, and Leela and the Master have to try to get one of them to talk. It's not even a good cop, bad cop thing, although it sort of works out that way, but they each try it on a different version of Finney and Valentine, and it's just really fun seeing them back and forth. This may end up being the best one, and uh, well, time will tell, time will tell, time will tell. I think it really might be, though. And finally is Desperate Measures. So after the Dalek Emperor has launched an attack on a, one of the Time Lord outposts, um, th there becomes an issue as to exactly what the Time Lord is going to do, and Romana, having lost more and more confidence in, Madame, in the President, has made the vote of no confidence, thank of the Phantom Menace, and has pushed her own self for the candidacy. 
So it turns out she cannot run for president because she already was president, but technically only that version of her can't be president again. And Romana promises to regenerate if she wins the election, which she would actually legally have to do. And that was kind of interesting, and I think it sort of speaks to the vanity of Time Lords. Sort of like, well, we don't want you. We already saw you before. You know, are we, ex are we supposed to expect, like, Marty down there to craft another statue of you? No, 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 no. Every statue's got to be different. And then we sort of see, like, Romana's um, opponent in this is a member of the War Council. And we sort of, we know exactly what's going to happen from this. Exactly what, you know, if the War Council goes in, they're going to impose their missions. You know, they've already been keeping a lot of secrets, as I mentioned in Celestial Intervention. So, the question is exactly what's going on, and how this how this election plays off, while Marvin goes to investigate exactly what the War Council is doing in secret, since, you know, they don't have to report to anyone what they're doing, and how this ends up, and how this ends is actually really shocking and really interesting. Like, oh my god, like, once you listen to Desperate Measures... And once you hear how that ends, you're going to connect to another episode, to, to an actual episode of Doctor Who, Who, and I'm not going to tell you which episode it is, because it'll give it away too much. But once you hear how it ends, you're going to go to that episode, and you won't even have to need any other context than that. So I'm not going to go any further. So that was it. Um, I honestly enjoyed this a lot, in case you couldn't tell. Um, I never thought I would really enjoy a not even a Dr. Light series, a No Doctor series, but I think this speaks to, to not just the characters, how strong they are, but to how good the writing is. When you do an episode that doesn't have the titular character, even a main character, even your favorite character in it, there's, there's a sort of unconscious eye-rolling you do. It's like, oh, well, you know, if my character, you know, he'd have done it differently, or, you know, this is why the Doctor is needed. This is why, you know, you need Batman. Like, like... Um, Battle for the Cal, when Nightwing has to become Batman, and Tim Drake has to leave to become Red Robin to go find Bruce, and Damien becomes Nightwing's Robin, the Bat family stepped up in Bruce's absence, and they did as good a job as one could expect. And the same thing go, well, there's no Superman, so we carry on as Superman. This isn't even a replacement of the Doctor. The Doctor's just not here. He's got other stuff to do. Like, not be involved in this war. And whether whether the in-universe characters know it, they've all stepped up. They've all said, we know the Doctor, we we sort of, we have great respect for him, and we're going to honor everything. This has made me want to listen to the rest of the Gallifrey series, and I'm totally going to do it. So, if do I think this is one where, if you have never heard from Big Fish before, you should give it a listen to? I kind of want to say yes, if not for the price, it's... It's like $30 American for CDs, $20 download. But it it's really good if you've got if you've already had a taste of Classic Who, or if you know Classic Who and you know a bit of New Who, then I think this is a great place to jump on to. Um, but that's up to you. Um, if you've heard these, leave your feelings on them in the comments section. Um, don't talk about that particular spoiler. Don't talk about how these end. If you can avoid it, please avoid it. And I will catch you all later. This is the Bucket Think Tank signing out. May your fandom serve you well.